As the American business magnet Warren Buffett said, read 500 pages every day. That's how knowledge works. It builds up like compound interest. All of you can do it, but I guarantee not many of you will do it. And when I met him, he told me he especially enjoyed reading biographies. And of course, the hardest biography right now is the biography of Elon Musk. Elon's journey to success is fascinating, but it is more important for us to look at the mistakes that he made so that we can avoid making those mistakes. It's about evolving in life and paving a resilient path and avoid making the same mistakes that other people have already made. And that's why I made this series so that you can learn from Elon's mistakes and also save you a lot of time. Elon started his first company, Zip2, at the age of 24. Let's see what he has to say about the challenges. In starting the company, I had nothing. I had no income source. But we found that an office was actually cheaper than an apartment in Silicon Valley. So we got this dinky little office that had a leaky roof. Uh, it was just the, the nastiest place you can imagine. And you lived in it too? And, and I lived in it too and showered at the YMCA. And today, these two chapters are very important because we are talking about the time that he's about to graduate from university to the reason and what motivates him to start his first company and his success. He was already certain that there are three areas truly affect humanity. The internet, sustainable energy and space travel but he faced a monumental choice pursue further education at the ivy league or risk it all on a startup now here's the thing about life you can either skate down the path well traveled or you can break the mold and carve a path of your own so what did elon do most importantly what would you do in that situation and he didn't just think different he lived it in today's episode, you are not just a viewer, you are a co-traveler on an unparalleled journey. This is chapter 9 called Go West. So he was 23 and 24. He was studying at University of Pennsylvania at the time, and he thought Wall Street did not contribute much to the society, although they're quite well paid. So he took on some summer intern program and went to the Silicon Valley. And he was facing either to study material science at Stanford as a master or potentially PhD degree, or catching the internet wave. And this part is very important. I name it, ask for advice, get money twice. From Pitbull, actually. Um, so he had a mentor before, right? It's Peter, um, Scotia Bank. He asked his mentor, should I pursue the idea of the Virtual City Navigator or should I start a PhD program? And Nicholson, who had a PhD from Stanford, gave him a straight answer. The internet revolution only comes once in a lifetime, so strike while the iron is hot. You have lots of time to go to graduate school later if you're still interested. And see, these are things that are very important. In those critical moments, you will probably want a mentor that will tell you straight. According to his opinion, and he doesn't have a skin in the game, right? So those are super important. And what did Elon do? He actually hedged his bets. He officially enrolled at Stanford and then immediately requested a deferral. And this is what he said to his teacher. If I fail, I like to come back. And some lessons here, right? Although in America, we're in the Western world, we heard so much about this entrepreneur, that entrepreneur, they dropped out of college and then they went out to build a very successful company such as Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg. Keep in mind, those are just a small percentage, probably one to 10% of the success story that you heard. Those guys have made it. All those 91% or even 99% of people who never made it, you never even heard about them. And these are something that for you to consider. And next chapter 10, which is super important, called Zip2, Palo Alto. He was 24 to 28. And there are many challenges that he faced at that time. Him and his brother started a company and then they moved out to Silicon Valley and his brother was doing BD, business development at the time, right? So his brother Kimball went to talk to a Yellow Page publisher. And this is what they, uh, the other guy did. The publisher threw the Yellow Page directory at Kimball. And he said, do you honestly think you are ever going to replace this? And the fact is, they did. And, and I lived in it too and showered at the YMCA. 
Um, this, this lasted for about uh, three or four months. And the reason we chose this, this office, in addition to it being really cheap, was that there was an internet service provider on the floor, in, on, on the floor below. So we were able to get really cheap internet access by drilling a hole in the floor and connecting to their server directly. Back to a story, the brothers rented a tiny office in Palo Alto that had room for two desks and futons. For the first six months, they slept in the office and showered at the YMCA. But mainly, they ate at Jack in a Box because it was cheap and open 24-7. Elon spent many nights in the office, crushing under his desk, especially when he was exhausted from coding. And he had no pillow, he had no sleeping bag. I don't know how he did it, sis an early employee. An important factor, right, is family. And a lot of entrepreneurs, they get support from the people believing in them. And usually at the beginning, it's family who supported them, right? So Errol, who is Elon's dad, visited from South Africa and gave them 28,000 plus a beat up car he bought for 500. So 28 grand US dollars equivalent today is probably about 60K. He's that lead them. And their mother, May, came from Toronto more often, bringing food and clothes. She gave them 10 grand. I let them use her credit card. 10 grand is probably 20 to 30 grand nowadays. And they have equivalent to nowadays 80,000 to build a startup in Palo Alto. And keep in mind, rent and cost of living probably wasn't cheap neither back in the days. So continue with the story. May flew from Toronto to help prepare for the meetings with venture capitalists, often staying up all night at Kinko's to print the presentations. It was a dollar a page for color, which we could barely afford, she says. We would all be exhausted except Elon. He was always up late doing the coding. When they got their first proposal from potential investors in early 1996, May took her boys to a nice restaurant to celebrate. That's the last time we'll have to use my credit card, she said when she paid the bill. And it was. I truly believe that there are many places in the world, if you really put in the work, whether it's a tech startup or not, it will usually probably pay off. If you are so believing your craft and you're getting pretty good at it and you put in the hours day after days, years after years, even decades after decades, and eventually one day an offer from a firm to invest $3 million in a company. And so they took the investment and they keep working on the company, right? The venture capitalists soon did what they often do, bring adult supervision to take over from the young founders. This is what happened to Steve Jobs. This, ha this happened also to the founder of Google. Elon does not believe in a concept of work-life balance. At Zip2 and every company he built, he drove himself relentlessly all day and through much of the night without vacations and he expected others to do the same and connect to what I just mentioned. It requires so much work and most likely 99% of the time there will be no work-life balance. So if you're graduating from university, so before you start your own first company, really think about do you really want to commit what you're doing where your business idea that maybe you have to spend 10 years working on it live pretty much like a freshman student or like a homeless person which means that your startup still might fail are you willing to commit to that think about that first before you start a business and again back to the biography like steve jobs he genuinely did not care if he offended or intimidated the people he worked with as long as he drove them to accomplish feats they thought were impossible, right? And not only you put in the work, but also you need very talented people to work very, very hard to do the things that are seemingly impossible, which is to deliver or to ship. And then the millionaire. In January 1999, less than four years after Elon Kimball launched, Zip2 was offered $307 million in cash. The brothers had split their 12% ownership, stake 60-40, so Elon at the age of 27 walked away with 22 million and Kimbo with 15 million. When the check arrived at Elon's apartment, this is what he said, my bank account went from like 5,000 to 22 million and 5,000. 
Hayır ama sıkıyorsun. I expect to receive a car that I've just bought, which is called the McLaren F1. Wow, I can't believe it's actually here. It's pretty wild, man. This is definitely very cool. I like it a lot. Congratulations. Just three years ago, I was showering in the, yeah, at the Y and sleeping fun. on the office floor. <laughs> and now, um, obviously, I've got a million dollar car and quite a few creature comforts. It is a moment in my life. <laughs> All clear. Clever F1 sports car, the fastest production car in existence. And oh, by the way, two. Pay back his parents. They gave a lot of money to his dad, and they put together one million uh, to give back to their mom. Always give back to acknowledge and show love that people have supported you on the way because they don't have to. It's quite interesting to see his journey from young kids growing up in South Africa was so difficult to he decided firmly move to Canada. Till he transferred to UPenn, till he meet the mentor, he making some good friends. He's always traveling, trying new things, and then take a huge risk not to go for keep continuously studying at Stanford and start his own business and working his butt off. And uh, now he get paid twenty two million, spend one million dollar on car. What a journey, right? Conclusion. As we started this journey, we saw a young man that's at the crossroads of life, wrestling with monumental choices, much like each of us faces a different part of our life. Now Elon finds himself at another crossroad, but with the weight of extreme success. Justine, who's his first wife, reminds us that such success come at a steep price. So, what cost are you willing to bear for your own vision? And what's the next insanely great step for Elon on his journey? And as the curtain falls on this chapter, many questions hang in the air. What changes when you suddenly have the world at your feet? How does wealth impact the dynamics of a dramatic relationship, which is the one he has with Justine? The answers, like all great stories, are more complex than you think. So don't miss our next episode as we explore these compelling facts of Elon's journey. Until then, as you go about your day, remember the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. Stay hungry, stay foolish. This is Jazzy. New episodes coming out every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Till next time. Thank you so much for watching.